These are a selection of my Parkhurst boots, showing their last evolution from their 2018 number 18 last to the Andrew Savisco Design 602 last, and then uh, when they moved from their partner factory in up to, uh, upstate New York to Spain during COVID, their Spanish 602, and later 602M last. Now let's see how they've evolved and what you can expect in fit and sizing in the current last. Hi, good day. How are you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy. If you're new here, my name is Tech and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on in uh, Western Australia, the Wajik people. I have 14 pairs of Parkhurst boots to date. 15 if you count their collab with uh, Nick's handmade boots. <laughs> People ask me what are my favourite boots. I honestly don't have one. But if you ask my favourite boot brand, it would have to be Parkhurst. So, a, a bit about Parkhurst. As a brand, it's a, it's a really small brand and is run, managed and worked on by one man, uh, the founder Andrew Savisco. He was a finance analyst who had a passion for American heritage boots and started the brand in 2018 by bootstrapping the startup, literally with his own savings. No investors, no kickstart campaign, uh, in order to retain control over his vision. If you want an insight into the man and his struggles over the COVID years, go and see my interview with him up there. During the height of the pandemic, Andrew struggled to keep his American supply chain, but many of his suppliers shut. And even the factory he teamed with, the former PW Miner factory in upstate New York that uh, had been rescued as the Artisan Boot and Shoe Company, finally called it quits and shut down. With literally nowhere to turn, Andrew could have followed, but he was introduced by his other factory and supplier partners in the US to a Spanish factory which could supply materials and make boots at small runs uh, and make those small runs economical. So Parker has moved manufacturing to Spain in uh, what I want to say 2022 and started to make boots again. During their history from founding in 2018, they have evolved their lasts and that will have an implication on how their boots fit. For example, all of these boots are US 8D, but if you compare this Richmond boot in Ray's reverse mohawk, against the uh, Richmond boot in light natural double shot leather, you'll see the different shape to the toe box uh, where the Mohawk Richmond was made on the older 18 last and showing a more almond shaped toe than the double shot in Parkhurst's 602 last. But before I go on, not all of my viewers are boot nerds who <laughs> study all the cobbler videos and how to make videos on YouTube. Uh, so let me explain about lasts. This is a last. This is a vintage last I got locally, but uh, what it is, is the foot-shaped mold around which you build your boot. In this case, this is a shoe last. It, it would be obvious that whatever boot this is made on this last will be uh, quite low profile on the toes and also with a sharp almond-shaped toe box. So it should be obvious that the boots you make, uh, their shape will look like the last. That's why an Iron Ranger looks round and bulbous. It's built in the round barber's toe last. That's why an RM Williams Chelsea boot looks slim and has a pretty pointy chisel toe. The last it's built on looks like that. Boots are made on the last by first sewing all the uh, pieces of the uppers together and then you pull them around the last. Depending on what type of construction the boot is made in, usually you start with nailing the thick leather insole to the bottom of the last uh, then you pull the sewn uppers around the last and pull them tight and nail them to the inside, uh, to the insole uh, and the last. The uppers are left there until they take on or are trained to stay that shape, probably several days. The welt is then sewn onto the insole and the uppers. Then you fill in the cavity caused by the thick welt uh, forming like a wall around the edge uh, with cork or some other filler. Then you glue the midsole and outsole on and you sew the whole lot together through the outside edge of the welt depending on construction method. I missed a few steps there. Uh, there's shanks and gammings and things, but we're getting too technical. Now, a last can be bought from last makers. For example, Springline in the UK is a famous last maker, uh, designing and making lasts for many UK brands and bespoke makers. 
Sometimes uh, the boot brands design their own lasts and then get them manufactured in wood or fiberglass or plastic by last makers. It gets fancy these days. Some of these contract last makers do 3D printing and stuff. Sometimes, like the Indonesian boot makers, they design and carve their own last themselves from a block of wood. This is a block of wood, vintage. Okay, so as a boot brand, you bought or you designed and made one last. But what size is it? If you have a size 10, how do you make boots that are sizes 8, 9, 11 and more? So you have to decide to buy a few, uh, maybe the more popular sizes. But wait, what width is it? A D? What about people who have skinny feet or wide feet? Oh, bugger. So <laughs> with all the sizes of lasts that you bought, you now have to buy them in multiple, say three widths. Uh, but wait, hold on. <laughs> You're getting multiple orders for a size 10D, but you only have one last in 10D. Does that mean the order has to wait and you delay manufacture until you finish one and then start the other? So, damn you have to buy multiple lasts of the same size and width. <laughs> you starting to get the picture? That's why some of the smaller boot brands offer a limited number of sizes and widths. That's why Indonesian boot makers, for example, take so long to make a pair of boots, you may have to wait your turn. Depending on who owns the design and on customization, one boot last could cost up to 750 US dollars. So, Say you decide to offer sizes 7 to 11 in two widths, D and E. Now that's 10 individual physical lasts. And say you want three copies of each to keep production going. That is 30 individual lasts. So they cost you $500 each. That's an investment of $15,000. That's before you even sell your first shoe. <laughs> so next time you see a small brand not offering half sizes or not offering doubly width or something, Show a little understanding, I guess. Anyway, back to Parkhurst. When they started in 2018, they offered the number 18 last. Uh, this Richmond in the reverse Mohawk is made on the number 18 last. Uh, you can check out uh, one of my earliest boot reviews on this up there. As you can see, it's quite a slim looking last and a firm favorite amongst the earlier Parkhurst collectors. In my standard 8D, it's a good fit with a uh, snug heel, quite a snug waist, enough room in the ball of the feet uh, before closing into a pointy almond shaped toe. It's different from other pointy almond shaped toe boots that often look uh, longer to fit your toes in without squeezing them. That's because in this case, it sharpens down from a wide ball of the foot quite quickly. I actually love this look but it's not my best fit. I can feel my toes at the side of the toe box. As far as I'm aware, Parkhurst uh, at that time offered only one width and Andrew used to advise people with wider feet to size up by a half. This kind of makes sense because of the last measurements, uh, they would be proportional. A longer size means a proportionately wider ball. But not everyone was able to do this, especially if you were borderline going up a size anyway. The longer length might not have fitted you lengthwise. I think that's why the 18 last was discontinued. Soon after foundation, the 602 last was introduced. This one is an early 2022 model, uh, the Richmond and Seidel's light natural double shot. Andrew designed a 602 last himself. It's called the 602 uh, after the designation of the landing ship tank that his grandfather served on in the US Navy. It's called a combination last, like the famous Alden True Balance last, where the heel starts in a B width and the forefoot opens out to a wide, slightly oversized D width going on E. As a combination last, it, looks, it locks your heel and waist in for stability and offers pretty good arch support uh, because of the narrower waist, but also offers plenty of room in the ball of the foot while still technically an almond shaped toe. Uh, compared to the 18 last, it's a lot more roomy and less restrictive at the little toe side of the foot. This is one of the best lasts for my feet. In an 8D, my regular boot size, I feel secure without any heel slip once it's broken in. The ball feels snug like a proverbial firm handshake with room in the toe box to curl my toes. In profile, it retains a fairly low profile and in my view, rivals the sleekness of a Vibok 2030 last. When Parker's moved manufacturing to Spain, I, I personally believe a new type of 602 last was used before the development of the 602M. In my discussions with Andrew, nothing's been said, 
uh, and it may be due to legal, commercial and confidence reasons, but when the Batavia New York factory shut, it is possible that the small brands using that factory lost their physical last to the liquidators. In the contract factory world, as the purchase of the last are very expensive, sometimes the factory will order and get the last made and fund it. The bootmaker then pays them a license fee and then after a while ownership of the last moved to the brand once they paid it off. It is possible that when the factory closed they had legal ownership of the lasts or simply possession being nine tenths of the law they couldn't prove legal ownership and the liquidator took them. I do know of another small brand that told me in confidence that they lost a lot of money by, be, by uh, losing control of the lasts that they had in the factory. So if that's true and I stress I do not have any confirmation of that then Parkhurst would have had to get new physical lasts made and shipped to Spain. The reason I think this is what happened is that the look and feel of the early Spanish 602 last uh, Parkhurst boots look and feel slightly different. This is the 2023 uh, Allen boot, Parkhurst's plain toe model in uh, CF Stead's Gaucho Moose. You can see my review up there. If you ignore the plain toe and look at the profile in comparison to the double shot, the curve down to the tip of the toe is a lot less steep. On foot, it feels slightly roomy in the toe box, uh, and this is before Andrew adjusted the last into the slightly larger 602M. That Spanish 602 last felt good, but in my opinion, I think not as good a fit for me as the New York 602 lasted boots. They were a good fit rather than fitting like a glove. More recently, Andrew developed the 602M last initially to make the mock toe Niagara. Uh, you can see my Ni uh, Niagara review up there. Uh, and to make the Elmwood Chelsea's, uh, both of these boots needing a, a little more toe volume. Since then, he has made the 602M the standard across all the models. The current 602M adds about one millimeter across the vamp area and the toe box. Doesn't sound a lot, but it does affect the feel if not the fit. This is the Allen in natural Dublin Vetch tan and is made on the current 602M last. If you compare it to the older Gaucho Moose, the eye can't spot the difference, so there's no change to the aesthetic of the boot. However, in terms of fit, the 602M uh, can take a thick woolen sock on my feet and I've actually put in a thin ortholite insole. Andrew says that it will affect those with narrower feet or lower volume overall or those with lower insteps. Now, if that's you, like me, I think you will feel the extra volume and Andrew says that if you fall into this category, you may need a size down a bit a half size down more uh, from your typical 602 last size. My preference is still for the original 602, but the change to the 602M has been marginal. So it's still the best last for my feet, even if I have to put in an insole. The change is not enough for me to have to size down. If I'm picky though, I could say that the 602M in my regular size makes my feet more tired unless I wear thick socks or use an insert because my feet feel like they're you know, trying to get purchase inside the boot when you're walking. So what should you do if you order in the current 602M last? If you're a regular D, I wouldn't panic. I'd order in your regular 602 size or regular boot size, you know, uh, go a half down from Brannock. Parkhurst generally offers sizes between 7 and 12.5 with a, a, a sprinkling of half sizes in between. The standard in the combination last is BD width and you can to some extent successfully size up or down by a half to accommodate slightly wider feet or feet on the cusp of going from D to E. In some models, Parkhurst also offers double E width. If you hover over shop collection on their website, uh, link below in the description, you'll see wide widths in the drop down. Not too many. Remember what I was telling you about the cost of different lasts? If you are puzzled, contact Andrew through the email on the website. He's really very good in responding and everyone, myself included, says that he gives one of the best personal customer experiences in the boot world. Sometimes though, and people have told me, his lasts just don't work for them. Sometimes a boot last just isn't for you, as I know to my cost in some boot brands. Okay, there you go. I hope that's been of some value to you. Hopefully you've learned something about lasts, about being in the business of making boots and of Parkhurst's uh, evolving lasts and fit. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do, mate. Click on like. And of course, if you're still not subscribed, what are you doing? <laughs> Go, click on subscribe. 
Until the next time, you take care and I'll see you soon.